things you saw that look like gates? Was that the It's been 10 structure? years since this Rochester native and 9-11 first responder first set foot here on what's now known as Ground Zero. It's tough to get your bearings now with, with the buildings the way they are. In September 2001, then 23-year-old Paul Dondorfer was exactly one year into his career as an NYPD officer at Precinct 19. On the morning of the 11th, a firefighter friend from really? Greece woke him up wow. with news that an airplane had hit the World Trade Center. I remember the first words out of my mouth, you know, these, you know, these sightseeing planes, I, you know, they always want to get the best view. I go, so I looked out my window and I said, oh, Jesus, it's a pretty clear day out. I wonder how they missed the tallest building in the city of New York. Dondorfer packed a bag and headed to work. Wondering all along, was it a terror attack? Would there be more explosions? And would they find anyone alive? Some people described it as being like hell, like in another world. I mean, could you try and put that into words? It, it was, you know, I mean, it was, there was dirt and debris and smoke and flames and fire and, you know, people just kind of walking around like they were in a, in a trans and in another world, like they couldn't believe that what had just went on, went on. For three months, Dondorfer dug through piles of debris, hoping to rescue someone. Did you dread coming to work every day? Or? No, um, not at first I didn't because every day when I got up it was okay. Let's you know let's get down there. Let's, you know, tonight might be the, you know today might be the day that we you know, we find somebody. Maybe if I move one more rock or one more brick, you know that's that's where someone's going to be. And you know it's tough to walk away from that. And then you're excited to get back. That rescue never happened. Long days, long nights, um, very stressful emotionally. Um, to just very frustrating to be down here and not really finding what it was that we were looking for, which was, you know, people. And I remember, you know, the guys that had the, the sonar equipment, and, you know, thought that they heard tapping, thought that they heard things, thought that they might have heard people talking. And, you know, it, it was just frustrating to think that, you know, there was that potential there and then not being able to find you know, that, that prize at the end. In 2004, Dondorfer returned home to Rochester after the death of his father and joined the Rochester Police Department. Despite developing asthma and some other health problems, today he only has one regret, not being part of the rescue and recovery mission at Ground Zero even earlier that morning. I was born and raised a Catholic and my mom always taught us that, you know, if God didn't think you could handle it, he wouldn't, he wouldn't let you do it, so. Here you are. Dondorfer plans to return when the memorial here is finished. Nothing will ever replace it, um, and, and I think everybody knows that, but I think you have to have something to take its place. You can't just let, let it be a big hole, because that's what, that's what they wanted, and that's what would have been a win in their account. But it feels like a place where you know that there was horrendous things that had happened here, and, you know, place to change the world and you know that and you realize that and just walking the streets down here you realize that you know this is all part of what now our history so.